Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for fine art. You can call it visual art as well, cultural and creative art. Now for this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't have this application installed already in your device, I will advise you download this app in order for you to follow along this class. Now, Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for exams, for various exams, such as UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Calbepedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, to mention but a few. You can download the app from our website, www.examguide.com or you can download it as well as using your Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update, to be updated on new videos as we upload. Now, if you're ready for today's class, okay, let's get started. Okay, welcome once again to the last part of motif, pattern and design. Now, you see this class today, we are going to be taking the practical calls. Now, imagine me doing, going with you, you know, creating your practicals with you. Oh, so now, what will happen is, I will want you to go get four things. Just four. Number one is your drawing board. Just listen. You will get the four things. You, after listening, you just pause the video and you get the four things I want you to do now. Remember, we've been talking about motif, pattern, and design. And in our subsequent class, previous class rather, we talked about you know how to create these designs. Now we are going to do practicals on how to make these designs. But I want us to work, to work it together as in side by side. So at the end of this class, you should be able to have created your own design. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you the pattern we are going to create. Now that being said, I want you to go get your drawing board. Number two material you should get is your pencil. Number three material you should get, if I know you might not, it might be difficult for you to get a tracing paper. Get a white plain paper. And number four is your ruler. These are the four things I just want from you in the course of the study. Number one is your drawing board. Number two is your pencil. Number three is papers. White paper, A4 paper, A4 sheet paper. Something like this. But plain sheet paper. Get this. Your drawing board your paper, your pencil, and then finally, your ruler. So you get your ruler and then get your paper so then we can actually work. And then, however, we can advance to getting your what? Your colors, because we might actually want to paint maybe in two colors or one color. You can get any color, maybe just one or two colors. We don't need too much colors in this practical. So go pause this video now and go get your materials. I'm waiting, I'm counting. One, two. Okay, welcome back. I believe you've gotten your materials. That's amazing. Now, since you've gotten your materials, now let's dive into the practicals. But before we talk about the practicals, let me give you a little rundown on some of the motif patterns or the, um, the pattern and the repeat patterns that we are supposed to do. But we are going to handle one out of the many of them because we will not have that leisure of time to start rolling through all of them. But after doing one, you can use that concept or that precept to design all of them because they are similar. You understand? All right, now let's go. All right, so practical work. How to create repeat pattern. Now, the next to each other, both horizontally. Now, what I'm trying to say here now is if you're making a simple repeat pattern, you will let, you will, first of all, you will place the designs next to each other horizontally and what vertically. So that is for simple repeat pattern. We'll call it all over repeat pattern. So if you want to create all over repeat pattern, the design, as in your motif, will be vertically or horizontal. Not just, not, really, not just vertically alone. It will be vertically and placed what? Horizontally, all over, or simple repeat pattern. So in the course of this practical today, we'll concentrate on what? Simple repeat pattern. In as much as we call it simple repeat pattern, it might really not be simple. So, or better still, I will, you know, crescent to producing what? Half drop or full drop. They are still simple. They are just all simple. Your, your, the major thing is to get your motif. If you've got your motif at hand, then every other thing I walk over. Now, in the next um, 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 repeat pattern we will learn is what the half drop positioning. The half drop was positioning. So the half drop positioning is I showed you in our previous class. You know the half drop, and I showed you the full drop. And then we also talked about. Now the next one we also talk about the quarter drop positioning. The quarter drop was 
positioning. We have the half drop, we have the full drop, we have the quarter drop, and then we have what? The checkerboard. The checkerboard positioning. You know what they call the checkerboard? S graph. Yes. Or scrabble. You understand? The scrabble board or the checkerboard or the graph board, you know, positioning. All these are repeat pattern concepts. Now look at the other repeat pattern. A diamond effect, the diamond repeat pattern, which I showed you in our previous class, at intervals with varying space between what each other. Now, all these are what you will bear in mind. Now, with alternation of position upside down or flopping over to the left to the right, gives what a bisymmetric what appearance. Now, by using various what values of dark tones and light tones in what alternate what shapes. Now, these are ways you create what effect and creativity on your design. So, sit back as we diverge into the practical because I hope you're, you're very well ready, right? Now, but before we start the practicals, we still look at some other things you should, us, you should also put into consideration. Now, you should learn also how to overlap, you know, how to overlap designs on each other to suggest, you know, various what patterns. Now, by using the same basic shape, but varying in what in sizes and by overlapping for what suggestion of what various what plane. Now, just that is just what I want you to know about this. Um, well, now suggestion suggested steps in pattern making, especially in textile design. Now, this is exactly what we want to look into now. Now, this is the first thing I want you to do. Get your board. Are you with your board? Beautiful. Keep your board on a table. Get a table and place your board on the table. Now, I want you to bring one of those sheets of papers you got, one of it, and then I want you to make a drawing of your choice. Now, not just one. Make several designs of your choice. I'm not going to show you what I did. I'm waiting for you. Make several designs of your choice. I want you to pause this video and make your designs. So when you're done, you can continue. So I will go back to the next step two. I want us to take it bit by bit. Now, step one, you get your, your, your drawing board, you get your sheet of paper, and then you make a design. Now, you're not just drawing on the sheet of paper. You understand? But you will make the drawing in the size that is given to you. Make sure that you choose, you know, a most suitable word, motif that is easy for you to draw and to paint. You don't choose something that is very complex. Because if you choose what is complex, you might find it very difficult, you know, to represent or to repeat those things. So I want advice, you choose something that is very simple and easy that you can actually draw and then redraw and redraw. Because what you're doing now is repeat pattern. You're going to repeat it over and over and over and over and over again. So make several sketches of the intended motif picked from the team given to you by your teacher or given to me. Okay, for this class, I've not given you any team. So which team now would you think you want to draw? Okay, let's do the animal team. Okay, let's draw the dog. I want us to work with the dog. So get, your, get the dog and now draw the running dog. If you don't have a picture or the image of the running dog, I would suggest you go back to the next uh, video, the previous video, and then you see an image there. You can pause it, screenshot, and then use it as a reference point to make your drawing. And then make it very simple. Choose one of those images there and make it very simple. Now, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, look at these are three different motifs. So you can choose from any one of them. You can either choose to make use of this very one. Let me zoom it closer so that you see it. You can either choose to make use of this one, or better still, you can choose to make use of this one, or instead, you can still choose to make use of what? This very one. So any of the designs you want to work with, you just get it and then trace it out in the size I'm going to use to give you. Now, we are going to use a size. Now, after getting those sketches, Put your selected motif into a size given box with your pencil and what ruler. Now, what do I mean? Now, you get a, after you've gotten your, you've drawn your motif, this is this paper. You can break it into six points. You fold it like this. That will give you two. If you break it again, this will give you four. And if you break it again, to give you six. So we'll be working with this, the sixth size. You understand? Which means if I should open this, I'll have six square boxes. You understand? Is it six or eight? Eight rather. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight boxes. So I want us to work with what? This very size. I guess I'm comfortable with this size. But you can as well 
break it down. That is for those of you that have um, small drawings. You understand? So let's still break it down and see how many spaces we'll get here. Okay. So as we can have a lot of designs in our box. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we have 16 boxes. So you measure this, the edges, measure it. When you measure them, then you use this measurement. Now to draw that your design inside this measurement, make sure it will not go outside of this end. It, wouldn't, it shouldn't go outside. Measure from here to here, from here to here. Then when you measure it, you mark it out on another plain sheet. Then you draw your design inside this box. That's the dog. You draw it inside this box. So now, based on what I have on my screen, I say put your selected motif into a size given box with a pencil and ruler. Now this will now serve as what the dimension of each design unit on the larger paper. That is exactly what I just explained here. Cut out the motif to, to the design unit given size, just as I've given to you. Now when you cut it out, now you use one of these now that you've drawn as your tracing paper to repeat the designs. Are you with me? So remember I told you, as you've gotten this, you cut it out, then draw your motif inside, inside this. And then when you're done doing that, so we we'll go over to the next step. I hope I'm not too fast. You're following me right. Awesome. All right. So having done that, now let's go back to the next step. Now, this is just the box, exactly what I want you to do. Now, if you've gotten this as your box, now the next thing you do is you draw that dog inside this box. You just bring that one, draw it to be in the size of this box. Okay. Now use the instrument to divide the space available for the design, as in use your drawing instruments now, to divide the space available for your design into square or rectangular, as the case may be, which is exactly what we, we just did now. Leaving somewhat reasonable margins around the paper. So you must not allow your drawing to get to the edge of your paper. So just give a reasonable space so that anything you're doing should be inside. As a matter of fact, we can choose to work with just this four box at the middle, as in this four box. You can choose to work with these four box at the middle. You understand? So not the entire, so we'll just, we'll just leave this space and then work with just these four boxes. All right. Now do this in pencil, faintly. You must do it with pencil, What it should be faint, it should not be thick because you will need to wipe out all these lines. You need to clean them off. And I'm not asking you to fold your paper like this. What I'm asking you to do is to take the ruler, measure it, and then rule out the space like this in your paper. You don't fold your paper like this because if you fold your paper like this, you've messed it up. So don't fold your paper like this. Your paper must be flat and straight. So you just use ruler to draw the box. When you're done drawing the box, remember I asked you to give a reasonable margin, both the top and on the left, by the right, and even under. So your design should not go, should not fold the entire. It is still fine too if you can control your pencils and your ink so that it will not, you know, go out of your, or look abnormal. So, but however, just get the basic. Haven't done this. Let's go back to the next one. Now, this is exactly what I'm trying to explain. You see, these are, this is my own box. So I'm working with you. You see? So initially, I cut out my box. I've shown you my motif, which is the dog. And then I've gotten my first size image, which was what I showed you initially. And now I've placed them in box. And this is my fancy line. I had to use colors so that you can see it. You know, I'm, talk, I'm, I'm using a white plain um, background. If I should use any other thing, you might not see it. But I had to use color to indicate it. But normally, there is no color on this. It should be just be a plain white with your what? With your pencil or whatsoever that you use to rule the lines there. All right. Haven't said that. Okay. Now, fix the smaller piece of paper which contains your motif into each box which should be the same size in each of the boxes trace out the shape into what a larger into the larger paper without shifting the position now what do i mean by this now let me show you this image now if you watch now you see the dog i choose this dog so automatically i have started tracing this dog in each of the paper in each of those square boxes so i'm going to trace it watch what i did i created i what am, what am I doing now? This is half drop. No, this is full drop. Eh? Now, I did a design here. Um, sorry, did I just say full drop? It's your chakra board um, design. So, I made this design here. And then I created a space. I made another one. I created a space. I made another one. I created a space. 
I made another one. I created a space. That is exactly what I would do and fill up the space, this, this box. So I want you to do the same thing. Dye your design, start tracing, pause the video, trace them in each and every one of those box. Are you doing that? Come on now, I'll wait for you, don't worry. You can actually pause me and then come back and then we'll continue. All right, so haven't done that, so we are going to move to the next level. Now you should know this because this is your practical exams in your BC, in your in your in your in your, in your GC in your in your GCE, in your WAEC, in NECO, even in uh, junior you know junior WAEC to mention but a few. This practical most times comes out in your practical exams, so you must know this and then follow through. All right. So use the point of a biro as in the nip of a biro that has stopped working or writing, you know, to trace. On your paper because we might not we, 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 we will not use you will not want to use pen because if you use your pen it will show what you just need is the image is the is the is the traced image of what you're trying to to do so you don't use a writing pen you understand rather you just use a pen that is not working and then apply pressure on it so as you're drawing and make sure your thing does not shift you cut out that your design that your small design fix it in the box and then you start tracing you start tracing I have it traced. Okay, if you trace the first one, trace the second one, trace the third one, keep tracing. Trace, fill up all the spaces. You can choose to do all over, you can choose to do simple, you can choose to do the checkerboard, you can choose to use any pattern, any pattern you want to make. You can choose to do the bricks. So just let's, for now, let's just concentrate on the checkerboard. You understand? So if there is no tracing pen, all that is what not really important for the world. What, what all is all that is important for the mark is just for the mark or the trace tracing shape to show. We don't really need the you know the tracing ink or whatsoever on the board. So a tracing board or a light box is very suitable for and what's fast. That is if you have that. But if you don't have that, you can work with exactly what you have. All right. So now space in between motif should be filled up with what additional or supportive motif which is better included in the initial planning such addition shape must not shift away emphasis must not shift away emphasis from the major theme now what am i saying now for those of us that are doing the chakra board there's what we call the minor motif i've i explained the minor motif in our previous class if you don't know what the minor motif is go and watch the previous class video I, I talked about it, but however, now the minor motif is a motif that supports the major motif. Now the minor motif most times we use them to fill in spaces. They are not dominating. The one that is dominating is our major motif. That's what is dominating. The minor motif is not dominating. It is just there to support the major motif. They serve as what the, that's why it's called the minor minor motif. It must not have a large prominence as the major motif. So we use them to fill up too much space. Now, in checkerboard, we don't really need a minor motif, but I just had to add it to show you exactly what I mean by what added the minor motif. So beautiful. Now, if you watch, before now, there was, you see these other smaller ones that I added here. You see, it's even dragging the space because it's too big. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite big. It should be small. You know, that's why I say it's not necessary in checkerboard. Now, if you're making a checkerboard design, so you don't necessarily need to, you know, to add this, this stuff. Uh, but we call them the minor motif. So we just... Minor motif should be inside this particular one. Maybe somewhere here. Let me zoom closer so you understand exactly what I'm trying to explain. Now, the minor motif should just be somewhere here or here at the top. Eh? So by the time you repeat them, it creates another effect of design. So you see how beautiful this thing is turning out to look. So that's exactly what I'm trying to, what, to explain or to tell you. So whenever you're doing your design, also put this at the back of your mind. You know, you should, you should pay keen attention to it. The minor motif should not dominate the work. The minor motif should not do what dominate the major motif. All right. So let's go back to the next slide. Now, after transferring the motif into every unit, prepare your color charts. Now, this is the time for us to color. So, have you done? Are you done with your design, with your drawings? That's beautiful. So now you get to prepare your color charts. Now you mix your color. We talked about color, and I told you how to mix color. Don't just bring black and start putting black inside red. Oh, you will create you will create a blunder. So if you're mixing black to any color, 
maybe if you want to form brown and you take your black you get your red you put them gradually gradually until you get the skin the skin tone the kind of tone you're looking for don't just mix color anyhow it's not you create a chalky kind of effect and i might not even advise you to paint immediately just cook your color and then keep it and then come back tomorrow and start doing your painting but if you're not patient you know well, there's one thing with coloring when it gets to color and everybody wants to start painting wants to start painting no but it's better you you relax and take it one step after and other so mix them on a palette and test them on a rough sample first you see you mix your color on a palette and then test them on a rough sample first then you can make sure if, you, if your teacher is closer you can take it to your teacher and show your teacher if she's comfortable with the design if not she will he or she will advise you on what to do the right color maybe your color combinations is quite bad or your color mixture is not good enough so he or she will advise you or give you an approval to go ahead with your color mixture now these now after mixing your color trace out the shape carefully with a tiny simple brush or pen you can you could what retrace the mark with pencil very faintly in such a way that such pencil strokes will not show under your under coloring so in case maybe if you're not seeing the traced um, image you can use your pencil to start retracing it but in such a way that it should be very light in such a way that by the time you start applying your color the pencil will not be seen through your color because some of these um, um, colors they are transparent they are not really translucent but there are some that are really translucent you know they are oblique you 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 can't see through them they they, they are very oblique why some you know like the poster color most of them are transparent you see you can see through them so such colors you you try to clean and make your your tracing very very fancy so that is that now after doing that you distribute your colors accordingly and carefully you must be careful in applying your colors you must be very very careful in applying your colors showing every details hard brush must not be too good or half brush is really not may not be too good for design for such designs mostly if you're making a what a natural design now you use your what your simple brush use your simple brush now fat pen flat pen or marker could be what permitted especially in most what junior classes like if you're in junior classes like you can use your marker pen you can use flat, you can even use crayon you know because you can actually manipulate or control that but in high classes like student high school students you use you know poster color eh? or your gouache or you use your acrylic depending on what you have then use it and use your simple brush to trace carefully eh? we are students cannot afford a simple brush and poster color you can actually use your crayons so you understand so nothing can nothing should just limit you in this work now let's talk about the background finally now the background should be painted to make the design more solid now you know, you know we worked on a white background now most times when you're done you can actually choose to paint your background now your background color should not contract or should not act be dragging with the original color now what do i mean by that now the background should be painted to make the design more solid why you observe the law of coloring what in contrast you must obey the law of what contrasting what coloring avoid the use of similar tones or line for both the motif and the background you must avoid that completely you must just avoid that completely so don't use similar tones of color to paint your background and your motif whoa that is that if you've done that i would have loved to see your work but don't worry your teacher is my eye you take your work to your teacher and then show him or her auntie uncle sir man this is what i did what do you think and then they will now criticize you and then give you your the more you do these things the more you become perfect as a matter of fact you can start creating designs and then you start selling it oh yes there are people buying motifs for fabrics you understand so you can start creating designs and then you start selling it all right and there are different websites you can browse them different websites where you can sell your designs yes you can sell them and start making money so you're not limited in making money at your age so having said that with this you can start creating different designs and start pushing it out you never can tell what will become of it all right so having said that let's do a quick rundown of everything we've learned in this topic first we talked about the various forms of line and the basic functions of line then we also talk about motif we define motif talk about the origin of motif 
Then we also talked about what is repeat pattern. We describe repeat pattern. We explain the different repeat patterns, and then we describe how to make what repeat pattern. That is exactly what we talked about in this class. And then we focused in making, you know, the all over repeat pattern, which we use the dog. And then I also went for that to so teaching you how to color them and making sure that they are even and what and unique. Now, having said this, let me try your knowledge in the Q and A. Now, what is repeat pattern? It's a simple question. List two other colors and um, two other repeat patterns, you know, apart from the first one you, we, we mentioned, and then explain the bricks repeat pattern. These are simple questions I believe you can answer. And then for the finally, I want you to do another design using the diamond repeat pattern to create your own images. If truly you really understand exactly what will land in this topic. So I want you to use diamond repeat pattern and then create your own repeat pattern. If you have any question, feel free to go straight to your art teacher because the more you learn, the more you gather resources and then the more you look very sound, then you can actually challenge anybody. You can defend yourself anywhere, anytime, any day. And as a matter of fact, you can start making money. Oh, yes. You can start making money and selling your artworks. There are a lot of, you're not too young, neither are you too old to start making money for yourself. So you can start creating those things and start selling them. There is a lot of website that you can sell this product. So just take that as a practical. Do it. You never can tell who will like it and then wants it. Show it to your friends on social media. Upload it on, on your Facebook account, on your Instagram. This is what I did. And then you tag Sigma Tech so that other students like you too will join and then learn what you're learning. Having said this, let's go over to the exam guide and then try ourselves some questions I would really think we can have access or answers to. All right, so we are now in exam guide. You know this by now. So we just go straight to cultural and creative art. We select the topic we did for today, which is your design motif, uh, um, pattern and designs. You pick it and then random, let's get started. All right, now let's see question number. Let's try this, see what we have here. Okay. Sorry, let's try question number 25. Let's see what 25 has for us. Okay, a book cover design comprises of the following except one, author name, chapter, publisher names, spin, and title. A book cover design comprises of the following except what? The author name, yes. Publisher's name, the cover, yes, sometimes. Spin, oh yes. The title, of course. Chapters, you don't find chapters on the book cover. So this is a random question we're just trying our hands on. So you should know that that's why I picked it. It's a very popular one. And then let's see question number 23. Let's see what 23 have for us. I'm sorry. All right, so now let's look at number 20, rather, number 20. Now, man-made designs can be achieved by printing form. A, a rough tree back. B, a broken shell. C, flat animal bones. D, leaf steel. And E, potato cut out. A man-made design. How can you achieve a man-made design? Is it from tree back? Tree back is no longer a man-made design. A broken shell. A broken shell is not a man-made design. Flat animal bones. That is not a man-made design. A leaf stray, like a leaf stay. The actual of a leaf, the back. If you rub color on it, and then, and then finally, potato cut out. Potato cut out. Potato cut out is the correct answer because when you cut a potato into two, then you can now create your pattern inside the potato and then start using it to dab in the uh, in the um, in your motif space. So with that, we'll put an end for printing and for motif patterns and repeat patterns and then designs. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide. Now the app scores and give a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. Now you can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. 
it also have other features that make learning fun. Now, it is a must have for all serious students. Download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and then share this video to anyone you know that would benefit from it. Thank you and bye-bye.